Today, we're gonna to be making some floating islands. This is gonna be D&D terrain to throw down and finish out that big swamp board that I made in the last game for a Feywild one-shot. The idea here is to make something beautiful that helps to tell a story and immerse my characters in the world that I am building for them. We're gonna be building this using some cheap plastic wine glasses from the dollar store, a whole heap of leftover cheap junk foam, and then covering it with sculptor mold, texture paint, grasses and tufts and flowers and a whole heap of little extra details to really help them pop and make them look alive on our table. Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And this week we're gonna be working on some floating islands. This is gonna be the final piece that goes with my swamp build from the last episode to make an awesome Fey Wild game board for a one shot I ran over at Tomes and Tails RPG. But there's gonna be something different about this episode. I'm gonna have a friend follow along the entire process and you'll see that what she puts together is just as good as anything that I can make. This is to prove that you at home can do it yourself. All you need to do is follow along and use some of the right bits and pieces. Admittedly, not everyone has access to everything that I do, but you could always slowly build up your collection of tools and paints and grass tufts as you get further and further into the hobby. So let's jump over and start building our magical floating islands. To start out our build, we're gonna be using these clear acrylic wine glasses. You can get these from most cheap shops and they work great as a base for a floating build. Now I'm gonna be using my rotary tool to cut the top off these glasses and bring them down to the size that I want. Once we have a few of these ready to go, it's time to bust out the foam. I'm gonna be using this old packing foam that's come from various boxes and purchases that I've made. You could be using better foam for this, but this build is a perfect opportunity to get rid of a heap of this old garbage. So the idea will be to build up an island around this plastic base. We'll start by pulling some bits and pieces off and using a hot glue gun to stick them in place. On the very top, I'm gonna to be sticking a flat piece as this will be the base where we want our miniatures to be able to stand. So we just pile on the glue and stick this piece in place. Once it's down, I'm gonna start tearing away the edges and making it a little bit more random but trying to keep that top big enough to actually be playable. Then we start grabbing out some more hot glue and sticking a whole heap of pieces upright, running down the stem of the plastic cup. This can be super random and messy, and you just keep filling in the gaps until you have something you're happy with. This is what we ended up with, a nice base there for our islands at a few different heights. So we have a bit of variation, making sure that these are different heights. So it looks like all of these islands are floating at different levels. And this is why we keep a bit of a flat top so that we can throw down some miniatures. These are looking good, but there's this one problem with this cheap packing foam. It has these really unnatural balls that make up the entire thing, but we can fix that with fire. By sparking up and running one of these cheap Bic lighters against the edge of this foam, it pulls all of these unnatural shapes back and leaves us with a nice hard flat edge. So we go around all of the base and everywhere that we've torn up this styrofoam, hitting it with the lighter and melting it back. It also gives us the advantage of making a really random rocky texture as all of the bits and pieces of torn foam melt back at their own pace. I will mention that this is going to be letting off fumes, so make sure to wear the proper PPE and do this in a very well ventilated area. Once we're done with that, everything's looking nice and random. I'll come back in and stick down a few extra pieces of foam to give us a bit more variation on our top levels and maybe a few steps for our players to work their way up as they're climbing these islands. Then we repeat the process with the fire to melt it back and give us a nice random look. Now we're gonna go outside and pick some weeds. I'm gonna grab some of these dead weeds right here because they've got some awesome roots. 
and there's no better way to mimic natural roots than real roots. So we clean these off, let them dry in the sun for a little bit, and then pick the ones we want to shove into the base of our islands. These are gonna give us the look that these islands have been ripped out of the earth as they've floated up due to some kind of magical effect. Don't mind if they poke up through the top as this is what the plant will be that's producing these roots. We're gonna make a few little bushes and trees on the top and ultimately we just want a whole lot of roots and natural life poking out the bottom of these islands. Then we come in with some larger sticks on top to represent those trees and bushes that are producing these roots and we have a great natural looking base. Next step is mixing up the Sculptor Mold. This DIY Sculptor Mold has been made in a lot of my previous videos. I'll have the link in the description for the recipe. Essentially, we are just throwing in a heap of this base Sculptor Mold, mixing in some grout powders to add some color, throwing in some Mod Podge and glue, and then mixing in some water. Give this a big stir until it's a nice cream cheese sort of texture and then spread it all over the model. I'm gonna start by throwing it on the base just so these bases will blend into whatever environment we are sticking them down on. They also help add a little bit of weight. While we're here, we'll add in a couple of these rocks that are made using plaster from Woodland Scenics rock molds. Then onto our islands. We just pile this stuff on, filling in all of the gaps adding a much more random natural earthy feel to the build overall and helping to hide away anywhere that that original styrofoam pokes through. Some of the really flat edges or the areas that the glue poke out do look a little bit unnatural so the more we cover this up with sculptor mold the better the end result. Just like we did with the bases, we're gonna be sticking down some of these Woodland Scenics rock molds just to give us a little bit of variation on our build and then give this an hour or so to dry. So we went off, watched a movie and came back and these guys have dried nicely. We didn't quite cover the entire thing for both of these as I ran out of sculptor mold, but this is an idea of what they're going to look like. Now we're going to take a heap more of these Woodland Scenic rock molds. I'm going to grab some of the smaller cliff edge style molds and stick these around all of our edges up the top here where we want it to look like there is a nice rock edge. This step isn't completely necessary, but I've included this style on a lot of my builds. So this is just going to help these to blend into other natural environments that I have already built terrain for. And I've said it a million times before, the more variation in a build, the more natural it looks, as nature tends to do whatever it wants. Once they're all glued in, we'll mix up some more sculptor mold and shove that around all of our edges and cover up anywhere that we missed before, helping these rocks to blend in. This time I'm getting in there dirty with my hands to really push it into all of our extra bits and pieces. And we've added some cheap brown paint into the mix to help give a little bit more variation and be a nice top layer for our dirt. I'm also spreading this out nice and thin across the top to give us a more random base than that flat styrofoam. And now that our islands are completely covered in roots, rocks and sculptor mold, it's time to give them a night to dry. It's the next day and these are looking great. Time to bust out the Tamiya soil effects. This texture paint is one of my favorites. You can apply it on extra thick, dry brush it over various areas, or water it down and really just slap it onto anywhere that you want to have a nice earth effect. It dries super matte with this rough gritty dirt look and I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna come in and coat pretty much every area of this model that I want to have a dirt look quite heavily with this texture paint. And check this out, once they're dry, that has such an awesome effect. Now it's time for the stones. 
much like I've done on basically every other build, I'm going to give these a coat in a Space Wolves Grey contrast paint. This dries nice and matte and really seeps into all the gaps on these plaster rocks. And then we'll come in later on and give it a dry brush with a grey. But for now, it's time to start adding in some shrubbery. I love throwing down all of these different tufts, different colours of grasses and different flocks and static grass and flowers. Basically as much as I can fit on this build. So to start, we'll slap down a heap of matte mod podge on the top and come in with some static grasses using a static grass applicator. As you can see here, the applicator just helps for the static grass to all poke upwards. Not 100% necessary, I just like it and think it's a cool tool to use. Already that's starting to make a huge difference to our chunks of dirt and rock and it's only going to get better as we add in more and more little details. Next we'll come in with some static grass tufts and clump foliage all over the top and sides wherever we think it will look cool. This is by far the most expensive part of this build. Mostly this has come from dollar stores and cheap bits of leftover scrap, but this amount of static grass and different types of grass tufts and flowers can start to add up in price. So by all means, you don't need to go as overboard as we did, but this is the kind of thing that I absolutely love doing to these builds. I think it really makes them look magical and wild. And since I have the tufts, why not go ham? Now time to use some small foam flocking to look like more mosses and growth up the sides to add even more life onto these builds. Because why not, I want this to look magical. And while it seems like I've already gone overboard, we haven't even started on the flowers yet. I have this idea that I want it to look like these are the reason for these guys to be floating. So these flowers seem to have a magical ability that tends to pull things up from the earth and cause them to float. So anywhere on our map where we have these guys growing, we'll have a whole heap of extra magic. This is something I've thrown into my game to see if my players notice, and if they do, maybe they'll find some magical floating flowers that they can find some use of of their own. It's these little things by adding story into the details of your build that can be extra fun and can make it really cool on the table if your players notice these small details. I will say we played the game and nobody did. Now I'm going to come in with a whole heap more different flowers just to add a bit of extra colour as this particular build will be taking place in the Feywild and that place is full of magic. I think I finally have enough wildlife, so now it's time to come in and dry brush those rocks with the grey. I definitely should have done this earlier, but I totally forgot. This just gives them that extra cold stone look that we want from our design and matches the rest of the builds that I've done with the same stone effect. Another little bit of story we decided to add in was sticking some fruit onto these trees. If the players happen to notice or make the right kind of check, maybe they'll notice that there's a heap of fruit growing and dropping around these bases that could have some kind of magical effects, if you so choose in your game. This was one of those extra tiny details that was a little bit unnecessary, but pretty cool to add into the build. Sometimes I just like taking things to the unnecessary next level. And now that the top's looking good, it's time to repeat the process and add some life to the bases. So we do the same thing, throwing down some glue, some static grass, and a whole heap of different tufts for a bit of extra colour. And once all that's dry, it's time to add even more details. So we grab out all of these tiny little 3D printed bits and pieces that I've collected. I'll have the links for these in the description of this YouTube video if you want to print them out yourself. I paint them all up pretty basic, just using contrast paints and then adding in a few little extra details, giving us a nice collection of mushrooms and creepy crawlies and some little extra bits and pieces that we get to stick down to our model and give it that extra little bit of life 
that really immerses your characters in these beautiful pieces that can then also work as an amazing little display piece that your friends and family will forever be finding tiny little new details every time they look at your model. So we put down some critters, some mushrooms, and my absolute favorite, these tiny little frogs. And with these last couple of little details, these main islands are done. And I love how these have turned out. They look awesome with so many tiny little details. The floating stands has worked perfectly. And all in all, I just really like the way they look. But there's one problem. They're too tall for our miniatures. These guys are not gonna be able to get up on top of these islands without some kind of flying or extra abilities. So what we're gonna do for that is build a handful of smaller islands to use as stepping stones for them to work their way up. And for this, I'm gonna try a slightly different and more simple style of build. So I grabbed some scatter terrain and some of these clear cocktail sticks, then just poking them in as the base of this scatter is made of foam same as all of the islands. It's in fact using the exact same methods as the islands, just on one flat piece of foam. Then we grab out some XPS foam and just start carving away at the edges before really hacking into the sides to give us a nice random stone look. Be careful with this and don't cut towards yourself like I do. I only do this because I'm very comfortable with these blades at this point. Once we have a nice stone effect, we just start pushing them down onto the cocktail sticks. And then when we're happy with them, we give it a coat in a Mod Podge and paint mix. Once this is dry, we can add a little bit of texture onto the tops of each of these islands and then take them outside to paint. I give them a quick spritz in a Wraithbone white as this will take the contrast paint nicely that I plan on using. And just like all of the other stones on our main build, I give them a healthy dose in that Space Wolves Grey. Then coming in over the top with that Tamiya Soil effect so that they match the other islands and giving them a healthy coat in Mod Podge before covering them with static grass. Now they're looking pretty good. We'll test them out in place back on the main bits of scatter that I built for them and they're looking pretty awesome. But they do need a little bit more color. So we'll bring in all of those tufts and flowers that we used on the main islands, but just to a lesser degree, making sure that they hold that same effect and are covered in those floating flowers that we mentioned earlier. And now we're left with a nice little stone stairway up to our main floating islands and a super messy workspace. But I'll clean that up tomorrow. And there we have it. The full set of floating islands that put the final touches on my Feywild board. These have come up looking amazing. I've made an extra large island here for the final stage of these steps for our miniatures to work their way through. These are an awesome build. They look amazing sitting on the shelf and they look magical on the table. They played out beautifully in our game and if you guys want to see how that went down, jump over to Tomes and Tales RPG where we'll be releasing the full Feywild adventure very soon. I'd love to see you guys have a go at building something like this and share your results over on my Facebook or any other social media. I love seeing what you guys do using the inspiration from my videos. So this is showing you the difference between what I made and what my friend made. Showing the example of if you follow along with these processes, you can get something that looks exactly like what I'm doing. Again, I'll admit that she had access to all of the extra bits and pieces that I've collected over time, but I'm just a hobbyist like you at home. So there's no reason that you can't slowly over time put together all of the bits and pieces you need to copy these builds one for one. There are cheaper and easier alternatives by just using dirt rather than texture paste and cheaper paints, but since I've got them, why not use them? So these can go on the table, back in place, and they all blend in nicely to fill out our board. But for now, enjoy the hero shots 
and let me know in the future what you'd like to see me build next. Until next time, never stop making stuff. And if you haven't seen it already, jump over to last week's video where I build the swamp board that these guys are sitting on.